years ago, we could not have photographed these fields of canaf in Cuba. A plant bearing a soft fiber resembling jute, canaf is a brand new crop in the Western Hemisphere. It was brought here from the Far East to serve a very special need. From the fiber of canaf, we are able to make twine, carpet base, burlap bags, and similar products that are essential in our industry and agriculture. Cuban and American agricultural scientists have been working side by side in their successful efforts to introduce this vital new crop in our part of the world. Sponsored by your Point Four program, this project is but one example of how the people of the United States and other nations are pooling their efforts and resources to solve mutual problems. The building of a fiber industry close to home means that we and our Latin American neighbors will no longer have to bear the risk and the great expense of transporting a commodity so important to our daily lives from the other side of the earth. At this experiment station near Santiago de Las Vegas, Point Four fiber specialists study intensively every phase of canaf cultivation and fiber processing. Canaf yields the maximum fiber when planted in rows six to eight inches apart. Thick planting discourages the growth of branches and stimulates the development of the fiber-bearing stalk. Cultivation is unnecessary, smothers out all weeds. Fiber is embedded in a thin layer of bark surrounding the plant's pith-like core. An objective of investigations is the development of plants bearing the maximum amount of high-quality fiber. As new and better varieties are developed, planters are eager to utilize them in commercial plantings. This Cuban farmer is testing the fiber production of several of the most promising new types. Canaf is a prolific seed bearer, yielding up to one ton per acre on a 25 pound planting. Although only half of this yield can be commercially harvested because all seeds on a plant do not mature simultaneously. Canaf seed yields up to 20% of its weight in oil of a quality comparable to cotton seed oil. Seed from healthy plants of a good variety is a highly marketable commodity. A rank growing plant, canaf requires a fertile and well-drained soil, plenty of moisture during its initial growth period, and considerable plant food if optimum yield is to be secured. It has been found that the beginning of the rainy season, May in Cuba, is the best time for planting a fiber crop. Standard grain drills have proven very satisfactory for seeding canaf. The device is adjusted to drill 20 to 25 pounds of seed per acre in rows six to eight inches apart. While broadcast distribution is judged to be equally effective, it is not economical except in areas where farm labor wages are extremely low. Assuming good growing conditions, Canaf is ready to harvest about 100 days after planting. At this time, it has attained a height of from 10 to 12 feet, and its fiber is of optimum quality for processing. The cutting and binding harvester shown here represents a combination of two machines developed for the war hemp industry. Point Four agricultural engineers and their Latin American colleagues are presently engaged in further improving mechanical harvesting. This harvest at Bahia Anda in 1948 proved that canaf is also a good crop for the small farmer who is dependent upon manual labor. Because the growing season of this new fiber plant dovetails nicely with the sugarcane season, growers can manage an additional cash crop. And workers, long resigned to idleness between cane harvests, find a new source of employment. Bundles of canaf are carted from the field to be processed. A Cuban inventor designed this ribboning machine to strip the fiber-bearing bark from stalks of canaf. The device may be incorporated in a combine being developed for direct field processing. In the present method of fiber extraction, the ribbons of bark, or the whole stalks, must be submerged in stagnant water for a two-week period. This process, called retting, rots the organic bark material through bacterial action and leaves intact the more resistant fiber. 
Saving both time and labor, fiber can also be extracted by mechanical means. Once retted, the fiber must be thoroughly washed in fresh water to halt the rotting action. The washed hanks of fiber are then dried in the sun. Mechanical dryers will find extensive use in large-scale operations. The strong, dry fibers of Kanaf are now ready for the spinning mill and the loom. Since Cuba uses more than $20 million worth of expensive jute sugar bagging yearly, the cost of which must be absorbed by the American consumer, the development of this good jute substitute, which can be locally produced, is a promise of great significance to both republics. It is also an example of the concrete benefits that result from working together with our neighbors.